After a long time, I finally managed to get the different types of zigzaggers attachments. And I wanted to compare them all and see if there were any that were actually kind of good or if they're all just kind of cute toys that may or may not work so well. So, starting from the left is the simplest and smallest of the attachments. Just a generic Y-Star blend, I think. Um, it does come with um, a ribbon feeder for the front of it. Oops. And I will show you it in operation. The next is a Greist short shank um, zigzagger. It also comes with the ribbon feed and it's a little easier to use but it's quite a bit bigger than the, the first one. The third one I've got is the Singer Swiss zigzag attachment and I have it with all ten cams. And the fourth is the American zigzagger, which, for which I have four cams. I'm just going to show you them on straight stitch. I can assure you they, that the last two do more than just plain zigzag, but I thought it'd be interesting to analyze some of the pros and cons of them. I will be doing this, oddly enough, on my brother machine, which is a zigzag machine. However, it doesn't really matter because if I wanted fancier stitches, I could use one of the fancy zigzaggers on this machine. But it permits me to sort of analyze how it works. This machine's on here, so I can just get up and go. So, three of the four machines require the screw that holds on your presser foot. So, let me just make sure that we are in view and everything, since I have a bad habit of sometimes not getting the angle quite right. So, that looks like a pretty good angle. Okay. So this one fits fairly easily over the needle. They all, they all Okay, so off we go. I'm going to attach the star attachment here and discuss what's happening. So it goes on reasonably okay, nothing too disastrous. Um, then you've got the stitch wood thing, which is just a little screw mechanism. Let's make sure it's completely in the picture. All right, so I need to move this up slightly. And zoom back a bit. Yeah, that seems like a good location. Brilliant, so adjust the screw mechanism there. So, the first thing that you'll notice about this attachment is that there is really, really very little room under that foot. There's a four pieces of sheeting and that's kind of tight. I mean if you put eight it, it, it's just dragging so you know whether it would move very well with that height. However if you're doing thin cotton yeah it's probably okay. So if you're doing <clears throat> say say you wanted to overcast your edge it's on the maximum now, and it's a pretty good wide stitch. Oops. So it uses the feed stitch length to do its feeding, and it works pretty well. So, you know, if you're going to overcast your edges, it does a fine job, just make sure your tension's right. It's got a nice click, so it's quite pleasant to use. Don't change that. You need to make sure your tension's on the maximum usually to make sure it feeds properly. And I'm treadling this and it's doing an okay job really. 
stuck there. I might just decrease the tension a bit so it's inclined to jam. So if you want to overcast, you know, you need to make sure. Yeah, there it's going. It works. Not the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, but yeah, it works. So if you want to do something like that for lightweights of cotton, it works. So if I fold it over, you can. It's a zigzag. There's pretty. There's kind of not much else you can really say about it. It zigzags, which is kind of what it's supposed to do. And it's pretty good and even. Very pleasant to listen to, click, click, click. So if you need to do something like that, that's fine. There's kind of nothing else you can say about that. It works, it's okay. There are the stitches. It works. I'm not convinced you'd ever be able to do anything thick on it, which is generally one of the comments that people make about this kind of attachment. You're, you're probably not... Uh, able to do anything beyond the thinnest and yes they're probably quite right with this attachment so that's this attachment I'll just raise that up a bit comes on and off relatively easy it's it's not the easiest thing I've ever seen to get off but you know it's not terrible now the Greist so the Greist like the the Y star also has uh, a ribbon feed, so if you need to do that, it works. Um, I have just got this in the post yesterday, tried it out, it works. It does need oiling, but for one demonstration, it, it doesn't really matter. And what you'll notice, the first, one of the things I notice about these attachments is they don't have a hole in the front so you generally have to feed the thread through underneath before you start which you have to remember to do or you end up with a thread jam on top so first thing you'll notice about this one is it takes a lot more you can really put a lot more under there so that's an instant win on this kind of attachment. I do not know if the Singer attachment, which looks roughly the same as that, has that power. I would assume it probably is as high. Um, but the uh So the first thing you'll notice is that the zigzag is not as wide on this one. But let me just increase it a bit, see if we can get it to be a little bit better. Okay, let's see if that does it. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a little wider. Oops. Yeah. Increase. You can see it. It's working pretty well feeding over more layers. It's a nice sound. It's working quite well. And you can adjust the stitch. So this one, if you wanted to do a thicker one, and I have tested this with very th quite thick denim, um, works very well. So if you see there, I, I've sewn over it a number of times, but that is pretty thick. That's quite a few layers of denim and it works fine. So I'm quite pleased with this one. I think it's, it's a, a good, quite a successful attachment as far as the zigzag goes. I'm a little bit of a mess there, but it's probably just a tension issue. I need to adjust my tension accordingly. But it sewed through quite a few layers of cotton, but that's quite thin cotton in comparison. But it worked, did its job, which is kind of what you hope these attachments will do. 
and so that's quite pleasant. So the next attachment we're going to do is the Singer Swiss Made attachment. Now this one is absolutely the easiest one to get on because it's actually one of the smallest. So it's quite nicely designed, easy to get on, and if you're not silly like me and forget to put your uh, thumb screw in. Okay. There you go. Tighten that up. So, this is at the moment set on zigzag up, your standard zigzag. Okay. Now, the neat thing about this machine is it also has feed dogs on it on the top. So it helps pull through fabrics a little better. So you can even, so it's quite good for potentially thicker fabrics. I found all of these are not so great if you are changing levels of fabric. Sometimes you have to help it. So if you're going over a seam hump or something like that, it's not so great. Now the one thing that's really nice about this attachment is the only one with a little slicer here so you can pull through your thread. It just makes it a lot easier to do it. So here we have, so I'm thickening this up quite a lot just to give you an idea. There's a lot of room under this attachment compared to the other one. And so we will do a bit of sewing with this one. You know, notice it's no click or anything, it's really quiet, this attachment. And it's very easy to change this attachment to something, to other cams, to change the cams. But as you can see, it does a very good job. It's, it's, it's pretty good on the whole. So you can reduce it, you can increase your width, it, it feeds, so that, it's quite nice. The other thing that's really nice about this, if you just disengage the zigzag, it becomes a walking foot machine, which can help you if you're doing fabrics which require a walking foot. So that's quite good for that. Okay, oops, shouldn't have been twisting that. I twisted my needle bar earlier. Something you have to watch with these attachments. If you get the needle bar crooked, you can end up with kind of a mess. Um, that's my own fault. But it works very well. So it walks as a walking foot. The, the, the fancy stitches work very well on it. So it, it's a pretty nice attachment to use. So this one could potentially be helpful for me on this machine where I don't have fancier stitches, I just have plain old zigzag. So this would give me an option to do other things if I wanted, but I have other machines which do all that, so it's not entirely necessary. Out of all the attachments that I've used, the one that works the best I think is the blind stitch attachment. It really works well. In fact, it's more easy to use, it's simpler to use than the, the, the blind stitch on a, a newer machine. It just really works well, so I do like that. But as you can see, you can sew with it. You can do a reasonably straight line. It isn't a very straight line there, but that takes a bit of practice. But I like this attachment. It's, it's quite nice. I have used it to decorate some things. It's just there, so if you need one machine to do all the things and don't really want to lug around the different machine so you're on your featherweight, that one will do a job. So here's the American one. It's heavy, it's big, um, and it's the only one that doesn't use the thumb screw. So you have to make sure you put your thumb screw away safely. It's got its own thumb screw built in. And you'll notice it doesn't have a slot for the thread to go through, which does kind of make it a little bit of a pain. And But that's not the end of the world. I mean, it only takes one second. Once you've threaded the uh, attachment and you do a lot of... It's only if you're switching back and forth that it's not so great. But you can turn 
the zigzag on and off on these, so you know if you need to switch between it, you don't have to pull the attachment out. So I've got it set to the maximum stitch width. Now the first thing you'll notice is again we're back to there's not a lot of space under there. So this was set for the other attachment where there was a lot of space, and this one's you know pretty squishy now. So that immediately. I have heard quite a few comments about this. I have never tried this zigzag attachment on um, a slam shank, so I have no idea if it's as tight on the slam shank as it is on here. Couldn't tell you. However, I got this in the post yesterday as well, or two days ago. So we've got it, um, and what I'll do is I'll feed the thread through first. Now one thing I found was really interesting is the zigzag on this is not all that wide. However, when you do a multi-point zigzag, it's much wider. Go figure. So the regular zigzag just isn't that wide. And I'm not sure if maybe there's multiple zigzag cams, but just it surprised me a bit. So there's not a lot of room, but it works and it uses only the feed dog, so that's as wide as I can get the zigzag on that. Not really very wide, I think. But it works, it's pretty easy to use. So I'm not, you know, it works. It's not the nicest zigzag, the widest zigzag of all of the demonstrations I've made. However, one thing I found really fascinating about this particular machine was uh, this multi-point zigzag. This just really impressed me. It's, it's really wide. It's like a, a standard. It's not what I was expecting. Okay, start in center position, just for fun. So now, if we go on to the multipoint zigzag, let's reduce the stitch thing. So in many respects, I think this multipoint zigzag. Oops! Oops! Lost the thread. What have I done? broke the thread. I've got to check the settings on the machine. I've done something wrong, but anyway. Um, it works. It's way wider than the normal zigzag, but it's pretty good. It works very well. So, oh, if I had to do something in zigzag, I'd use probably the multi-point zigzag. It's a little easier to use. Um, I know it's very wide, and you can adjust it down as well if you want. So, there are the uh, four attachments. They all work, they all work differently, but it's interesting to see what they've come up with. And I hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.